The topic of today's lecture is implicit and logarithmic differentiation. Up to this point, we've seen how to differentiate explicit functions. These are functions whose defining equations are solved for y. We will now learn how to differentiate implicit functions. These are functions whose defining equation is not solved for y. Throughout the rest of this lecture, we will use the chain rule time and time again. So if you need to, take some time and review the chain rule. Let's now see how we implicitly differentiate. To differentiate these relations implicitly, we assume that y is a function of x. Then we differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x, making sure that we use the chain rule on occurrences of y. We'll also need to use all the previously learned differentiation rules when differentiating both sides of the equation. Finally, after you've differentiated both sides of the equation, bring y prime to one side of the equation and solve for y prime. Here's the first example. Differentiate the following relation implicitly with respect to x. 4x cubed minus 2xy squared plus y to the fifth plus sixth is equal to zero. Notice that the term negative 2xy squared and y to the fifth will require us to use the chain rule as they involve occurrences of y. Here's the solution. Differentiating the left-hand side with respect to x, using the product rule and the chain rule, we see that the derivative of the left-hand side is 4 times 3x squared minus 2y squared minus 2x times 2y times y prime where we use the chain rule, plus 5 times y to the fourth times y prime, again, where we use the chain rule, plus 0, is equal to the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to x, which is 0. Now, we'll solve for y prime. Bring the terms with y prime to one side of the equation, and throw the terms without y primes on the other. Doing this, we see negative 4xy times y prime plus 5y to the fourth times y prime is equal to negative 12x squared plus 2y squared. Factoring out the y prime, we see y prime times the quantity negative 4xy plus 5y to the fourth is equal to negative 12x squared plus 2y. Solving for y prime, we see that y prime is equal to negative 12x squared plus 2y squared divided by negative 4xy plus 5y to the fourth. Let's look at the next example. Find the slope of the curve y is equal to 2 times the quantity x plus y to the one third at the point 4, 4. Here's the solution. We need to find y prime, so we implicitly differentiate the equation. Taking the x derivative of both sides of the equation, we see that y prime is equal to 2 times 1 third times the quantity x plus y to the power negative 2 thirds times the quantity 1 plus y prime. Writing this as a fraction, we see that y prime is equal to 2 times the quantity 1 plus y prime, all divided by 3 times the quantity x plus y to the power 2 thirds. Manipulating this to solve for y prime, we see that y prime times 3 times the quantity x plus y to the power 2 thirds minus 2, all divided by 3 times the quantity x plus y to the 2 thirds is equal to 2 divided by 3 times x plus y to the power 2 thirds. Therefore, solving for y prime, we see that y prime is equal to 2 divided by the quantity 3 times the quantity x plus y to the power 2 thirds minus 2. Finally, to find the slope at the point 4, 4, we plug in x equals 4 and y equals 4. Doing so, we see the slope of the given curve is y prime is 2 divided by 3 times 8 
to the two thirds minus two, which simplifies to one fifth. So the slope of this curve at the point four four is one fifth. So in order to implicitly differentiate an equation, we apply the ordinary rules of derivatives on both sides of the equation and use the chain rule at every occurrence of y. Using implicit differentiation, we can now find the slope of the tangent line of curves whose defining equation cannot be uniquely solved for y. Furthermore, as inverse functions are defined by interchanging the independent and dependent variables, implicit differentiation can be used to find the derivatives of inverse functions. Before we see some more examples on implicit differentiation, let's make a few comments on them. Here are a few remarks about implicit differentiation. First, when implicitly differentiating a relationship, the derivative, y prime, will generally depend on both x and y. Second, implicit differentiation can be used to find the derivative of inverse trigonometric functions, and more generally, the derivative of inverse functions. Finally, implicit differentiation can be applied as many times as needed to find the higher order derivatives. Once you have a formula for y prime, you can find a formula for y double prime, and then plug in the formula you've already found for y prime to find higher order derivatives. Here's the next example. Find d squared y dx squared if x cubed plus y cubed is equal to one. To do this, we'll have to implicitly differentiate the equation twice. Here's the solution. If we take two x derivatives of both sides of the equation, we see that d squared of x cubed plus y cubed over dx squared is equal to d squared of one over dx squared. Notice that the right hand side of the equation will simplify to zero. Taking the derivative one time, we see that d of 3x squared plus 3y squared times dy dx with respect to x is equal to the derivative of zero. Taking the derivative again, we see 6x plus 6y times dy dx plus 3y squared times d squared y dx squared is equal to zero. Plugging in what dy dx is, we can now solve for d squared y dx squared. Here, we learn how to find the derivative of a logarithmic function. So, we'll find the derivative of y is equal to the natural log of x. First, notice that y is equal to the natural log of x if and only if x is equal to e to the y. This is the inverse function relationship. Now, the equation x equals e to the y can be implicitly differentiated with respect to x. So, taking the derivative with respect to x of both sides, we see that d dx of x is equal to e to the y times dy dx by the chain rule. Solving for dy dx, we see that dy dx is equal to 1 over e to the y. However, since e to the y is x, we see that dy dx is 1 over x. That is, the derivative of the natural log of x is dy dx is equal to 1 over x. So, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Now that we know how to differentiate the natural log function, Let's consider the following example. Differentiate the following equation with respect to t. f of t is equal to t times the natural log of t minus 2t. Here's the solution. We'll use the product rule to differentiate f of t. f prime of t is equal to 1 times the natural log of t plus t times 1 over t minus 2. Here, we use the fact that the derivative of the natural log of t is 1 over t. Simplifying this expression, we see that f prime of t is equal to the natural log of t plus 1 minus 2, which further simplifies to the natural log of t minus 1.
Knowing the derivative of the natural log function can help us to find the derivative of the log with an arbitrary base. Here's the example to see this. Differentiate the following equation with respect to x. y is equal to the log base 5 of 100x plus 3. Here's the solution. The change of base formula tells us that the log base b of u is equal to the natural log of u over the natural log of b. This implies that the log base 5 of 100x plus 3 is the natural log of 100x plus 3 all divided by the natural log of 5. So differentiating y we see that y prime is equal to the derivative of the natural log of 100x plus 3 all divided by the natural log of 5. Since the natural log of 5 is a constant, we can pull it out of the derivative. So y prime is equal to 1 over the natural log of 5 times the derivative of the natural log of 100x plus 3. The chain rule tells us that this is equal to 1 divided by the natural log of 5 times 1 over the quantity 100x plus 3 times 100. Simplifying, we see that y prime is equal to 100 divided by the natural log of 5 times the quantity 100x plus 3. Here are a few remarks on logarithmic differentiation. In order to differentiate a function where the variable x appears in both the base and the exponent, we first take the natural log of both sides. Doing this takes the terms with x out of the exponent. In some cases, this method for differentiation, known as logarithmic differentiation, may not be the only option, but it could very well be the easiest. To summarize, to implicitly differentiate an equation, take the derivative with respect to x of both sides of the equation, use the chain rule whenever you have a term involving y, and solve for dy dx. Logarithmic differentiation can be extremely useful when you have the product or quotient of a function with many terms. Implicit differentiation is also useful when trying to find the derivative of inverse functions. Take some time to familiarize yourself with the techniques above and try some of the problems we provided for you below. Good luck practicing with your problems and thanks for listening.